It's a fucking shame that this album did not explode. Hey, I fucking love ballads, all right? Sue me. He also dived so much deeper into the human condition. Get Used to It by Rhino Bucket is the album that ACDC should have put out after Back in Black. Some, some record labels don't know shit, but I get so excited talking about this fucking band, I get moving a little too fast. For fuck's sake, 1992. Fuck, where am I? Man, that year is just the bane of my existence. But the record label, fuck this band. It's catchier than freaking crabs on a New York City subway. And, and when I say pop metal, I mean that as a compliment. But David Lee Roth's voice, I mean, Come on. Like, you know, I feel like these bands that, that write songs that hit me, like, you know, they did something for me. And I'm going to sneeze. Welcome to episode number 10 from the hair metal guru. Notice a change in the name of the channel. I was going by hair metal haven. But if you followed me on Twitter for the last couple of years, I've always been known as the guru, the hair metal guru. So uh, in order to keep a little uh, continuity going, I changed the name of the channel. From here on, this is the hair metal guru, and I am the guru. For episode number 10, I wanted to do something a little bit different and something special. This is the, the reason that I started this channel was to introduce people to the bands they may not have heard of in their history of liking hair metal or hard rock or 80s rock or however you want to describe it. Everyone knows the, the big bands and I've done videos on those bands and I love those bands. I love the Poisons, the Warrants, Skid Row, Cinderella. Um, but everyone, everyone knows those bands. But here I am because I love some bands and some of the bands that I'm going to talk about today as much or even more than the heavyweights. I'm talking about bands like Wild Side, Dirty Looks, Sleaze Bees, McQueen Street, D.A.D., Electric Angels, Roxy Blue, Lillian Axe, Rhino Bucket, and Tough. And these bands put out some songs that I think stand up, stand up as well or even better than your heavyweights. So today, it's the underrated, the forgottens, the, the could've and should've but didn't of the hair metal genre. So buckle up as we get ready to talk about the bands you may not know about, but you need to. Look, I came here to talk hair metal and chew bubble gum, and it looks like I'm almost out of bubble gum. So here's how this is gonna work. I'm gonna talk about 10 albums that I think you need to own. And I'm not going to, if you've seen my past videos, you know that I go into detail on every song. I'm not going to do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give whatever brief explanation of the band that I know, and I might miss some stuff. Um, and then I'm gonna tell you about the songs that I think you need to listen to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to limit it to songs that I would rate an eight or higher. These are songs that I think could have been on the radio. And then, and then I'll, I'll also talk about if they have any ballads because, hey, I fucking love ballads, all right? Sue me. So um, we'll talk about rock songs, we'll talk about ballads, we'll talk about songs that I think rate an eight or higher. And I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go in any particular order. Um, it's not gonna be my favorite band at number one. This is gonna be in random order. And we are gonna start off with one of my favorite bands of the hair metal genre, and that is Dirty Looks. And specifically, we're going to talk about their debut album, Cool From The Wire. Dirty Looks was led by uh, vocalist Henrik Ostergaard. No, it could be Ostergaard. It could be Ostergaard. Somebody got fucking pissed at my Cinderella video for pronouncing Fred Curry's name wrong. So maybe it's Fred Corey. 
Sorry, okay? It's either Henrik Ostergaard or Ostergaard. So maybe I got it wrong. Deal with it, okay? I know more about Dirty Looks than almost anybody. And their debut album, Cool From The Wire, came out in 1988. And it only got to 134 on the Billboard charts. Um, and it, it got a little help because it did have a song on, on the soundtrack to the movie Johnny Be Good with Anthony Michael Hall and Robert Downey Jr. and Uma Thurman. I don't think the movie performed that well. I, I think it's a pretty funny comedy. Um, but uh, Cool From The Wire is such a top-notch top album. Uh, Henrik's got his his vocals. They they almost sound like if you crossed um, Bon Scott and Brian Johnson from ACDC. If you cross those two and maybe added a little little uh, little English uh, accent to it, you come up with Henrik's vocals. And this is a band that that definitely falls in. You know they fall from the ACDC tree. Um, Paul Lydell's guitar riffs are just crunchy and catchy and, and Henrik's got this, his voice is so original. So some of the songs that, that you need to, you need to check out the self-titled track, Cool From The Wire. You need to check out It's Not The Way You Rock, Can't Take My Eyes Off Of You, Oh Ruby, Tokyo, No Brains Child, Get It Right, and Get Off. So there's a couple of songs that I didn't list, but that's because this album is so freaking good that there is very little filler. Dirty Looks, Cool From The Wire, listen to it now. So Dirty Looks has released many albums after Cool From The Wire. You had Turn Of The Screw, you had Rip It Out. Um, I, I'll try to put some pictures, so I don't have all this right in front of me, but you know, a, a lot of uh, a lot of almost demo type releases came out later, so they have a ton of releases. Hey, support that band however you can. The second album I'm going to talk about is the album "What Comes Around Goes Around" by Tuff. Now, now Tuff is probably more famous for their singer Stevie Rochelle and his infamous website Metal Sludge. Now, I've been a Sludge fan forever. And in fact, when I was in Iraq in 2003 and 4, I became a Sludgeaholic of the Month, which right now sounds kind of cheesy, but back then I thought it was pretty epic. Um, and But even though Metal Sludge is, is still going around, I think they just celebrated their, their what, 25th or 25th anniversary, um, Tough was a great band. And, and Stevie Rochelle, man, there's nobody that lives this type of music more than he does. I mean, he is still out there playing with Tuff. He talks about this music in Metal Sludge. You know, he supports it. And and so for, for that, you, you, you got to, you know, you got to hats off to Stevie Rochelle for, for just constantly being a force in this type of music. What comes around goes around came out in 1991 and, and probably was just a little bit too late to the party. Um, they did have a, a minor hit with the ballad, I Hate Kissing You Goodbye, which I think made it to number three on Dial MTV. But personally, I felt like they messed up. They, they should have released an epic song called The All New Generation that everyone knows. You go heavy rock song first and ballad second the all new generation is this one of my favorite you know lyrically one of the coolest rock songs of that genre it talks about the history of music and and you know blasts everybody in the song from elvis to the beatles to cooper alice cooper to aerosmith to bon jovi and skid row um so so top notch rock song then they should have gone with the ballad so songs that, that I think would rate an eight or higher on what comes around, goes around, are for the rock songs, All New Generation, Good Guys Wear Black, Spit Like This, and Ruck-A-Pit Bridge. As far as ballads go, now here's Stevie Rochelle. 
He doesn't have one of those high-pitched 80s rock voices, and, and I, I really like his gritty vocals, and that's why he does uh, ballads really well. So I talked about I Hate Kissing You Goodbye, a very good ballad, but I think there were two other songs that were even better. First is, is Wake Me Up, which was actually co-written by Brett Michaels from Poison, and it really has a Poison feel to it. So Wake Me Up, great ballad. But then there's also kind of, maybe it's not a love song ballad, but a song called So Many Seasons, which which is more of a an acoustic mid-tempo song. And if I understand the story right, uh, it's about Stevie Rochelle's brother and his father both died very early. And and it's his his song about dealing with that. So that the lyrics are just phenomenal and emotional and this is 1991 and and it was cool to get away from the I love you and I miss you you know this this reminds me of Faster Pussycat's House of Pain which is I think is is, is one of the best slow songs of the hair metal genre so so many seasons fits right in with that um tough great album they they did release a couple more albums, uh, an independent album called Fist First, and then another album came out of Mausoleum Records, I think, in 1995, uh, called Religious Fix, which is basically Fist First with a couple extra songs. A really cool ballad on that song, on that album, called uh, Better Off Dead. But anyway, check out Metal Sludge. Go find Tough. Uh, what comes around goes around. They did just re-release. Um, a, a remastered version on CD and vinyl that you can find on, on Metal Sludge's website. So uh, Steve Rochelle, hero of, of this genre, go support that band. The next band we're going to talk about is McQueen Street, who released their debut album in 1991. Now, you, you, might, you might see sort of, um, you know, a common theme in some of these bands. They either just came out right... At the, at the tail end, maybe a little bit too late to make it big. And McQueen Street fo probably follows, you know, right in that theme along with Tuff's album. And later on, we're going to get into a band called Wild Side. And so, so that's a common theme. But their debut album that came out in 1991, uh, produced by Tom Werman, who produced a lot of other big albums that came out of that genre. And... Um, if there's if there's one thing that that you got to know about McQueen Street is their vocalist Derek Welsh has some of the most unique and powerful vocals of this genre and it's a fucking shame that this album did not explode because they had everything they had epic rock songs and not just the cliche stuff i mean they they did some of that you know, the, the sex shit, but they also went deeper with that. And then their ballads, they had phenomenal ballads and, and again, veered away from the, oh, babe, I miss you and, oh, I love you stuff. The rock songs you need to know of, When I'm in the Mood, Woman in Love, Money, and My Religion, and then the ballads, Time, unbelievable ballad and and I think it was it was released as a single it was released to radio none of these songs did anything at radio which is a freaking shame um time in heaven and only the wind man if you like if you like ballads go listen to this album um and and I'll throw this out McQueen Street has released songs uh in recent times and there's a ballad on there called One Way Ticket. It sounds like it was something that was recorded back back in the day. How it did not make it onto an album, I don't know. One Way Ticket, new ballad from McQueen Street. It's a 10 out of 10. I love that song. I love this band. They, they did put out the, the follow-up album called McQueen Street 2. Um, it came out years later, so I think they started recording it, and then the label probably shelved it. So they, they ha somehow got the rights to it and released it. I, I have listened to it. I, I don't... Maybe there's a reason it got shelved. It's not bad. It's not on the level of the debut album. But that debut album, 
is, is one of my favorites. Um, you, you're, you're fucking yourself over if you don't go listen to McQueen Street. The next band we're going to talk about is Roxy Blue and their 1992, for fuck's sake, 1992. Uh, their 1992 album, Want Some. Now, this is a band that people thought uh, or equated their, their sound, and maybe it was their, their guitar player, I think his name is Sid Fletcher, um, to Van Halen. And when you listen to this song, you're just caught up in the, I mean, I love simple, simple stuff. I love ACDC and three chord shit. Dirty Looks is probably similar to that. Now, I don't play guitar, so maybe it's, it's I'm sure it's more difficult than that, but I love simplicity. But if you like Van Halen, um, you're probably going to love uh, Roxy Blue and their singer, Todd Poole, way better. Okay, this is probably blasphemy, okay? I love and respect Van Halen, but David Lee Roth's voice, I mean, come on. So, the the ultimate front man, but vocally, you, you know, yes, the attitude was great. In Roxy Blue, Todd Poole has a phenomenal voice, so you get the, the musicianship of Van Halen with vocals that actually, uh, a guy who can sing. So the rock songs on Want Some that you need to explore. So Too Hot to Handle, Sister Sister, Rob the Cradle, their cover of The Who's Squeeze Box, um, Love On Me, and yeah. And ballad wise, man, uh, Todd Poole has, has, again, kind of remind, and Stevie Rochelle, he's got that grit in his vocals. I love that when it comes to ballads. Times are changing. Phenomenal ballad. There is a video floating around on YouTube. I'll try to put something in, in the com in the description. And um, nobody knows another great ballad. Lyrically awesome. Um, great guitar work. This is such a great band. They just got screwed by timing. They they have released some albums recently you know like like an acoustic album and you know some re-recorded stuff so and and i know they did put they did put out a new album i think it was i think it was just with todd pool and and some new guys that i honestly haven't really checked out i'll try to put something um in in the video but hey roxy blue wants some check it out the next band and the next album we're going to talk about is dad's no fuel left for the pilgrims. Now DAD is from Denmark and they've released a few albums before No Fuel and and then they got their break. They signed, you know, a big record record deal in America. No Fuel for the Pilgrims comes out in 1989, led with what man, one of the catchiest and best songs of this genre, Sleeping My Day Away, and it was a minor hit. And in fact, I think their, the, the debut sold over 200,000 copies, which isn't bad, but it deserved so much better. This is another album that powerful guitar and, and, and Jesper Binzer, their singer, has some of the most original vocals, very gritty. There are no ballads on this album, They're, though they did put a couple of excellent ballads on their follow-up called Riskin' It All, but no fuel left for the Pilgrims. Um, one of those all killer, no filler albums that you need to need to explore. So the songs, and there there are no ballads on this. So the rock songs you need to check out. Obviously, sleeping my day away, jihad, point of view, rim of hell with one of the catchiest choruses that you're ever gonna find. Um, True believer, good nation, and lords of the atlas. So I. I just I worship this album and the follow-up risking it all. They've released a ton of albums, so obviously go check those out. But the two major label releases in America led off by the epic No Fuel Left for the Pilgrims. It's a 10. The next album we're gonna talk about is uh the 1990 album Electric Angels. It's it's their self-titled album. I don't know, th this band has had the coolest look. They remind me kind of like of Hanoi Rocks without the blonde lead singer. 
but that gritty New York City streetwise look. But their songs are so epically sticky sweet, just the catchiest pop metal. And, and when I say pop metal, I mean that as a compliment. I'm not talking about shit where people are just trying to, you know, create some sort of, I mean, this is a real band. This album is phenomenal. A um, couple interesting uh, notes about some of the band members. Ryan Roxy would later go on to, well, he plays guitar in Alice Cooper right now. And he's been an in-demand guitar player uh, ever since the days of Electric Angels. Um, their bass player and, and, and main songwriter, Jonathan Daniel, uh, if, I, if I understand right, is a big, big-time music manager, I think. And somebody's going to get on me for not going to research it. Look, I have a fucking regular job too, okay? Uh, but a big-time manager, and I think he manages like Courtney Love, amongst others, and their singer, Shane, uh, great vocals. He, I think he and Jonathan Daniel ended up doing a couple bands. They were in a band called Candy, which maybe not a lot of people know about, but pretty pretty famous for their the early days of the, of the, the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles. They put out an album that's kind of, you know, universally loved in... in underground hair metal circles called Whatever Happened to Fun. Very pop rock, um, very cool album. So anyway, Electric Angels, let's get into the songs that you need to check out. Songs, you, rock songs that you need to know from Electric Angels. Live in the City, Rattlesnake Kisses. Oh my God, Rattlesnake Kisses. Um, there was a video put out for that. How did that song not break all over? It, it's catchier than freaking crabs on a New York City subway. Head Above Water, oh. Last Girl on Earth, Cars Crash, Whiplash, and The Drinking Song. How did The Drinking Song not blow up? And, and then there's a, a epic ballad called True Love and Other Fairy Tales. Man, lyrically, this is just beyond what, what most people were capable of. This album, should have blown up all and, it, and it, I mean it came out in 1990 so you you are getting to the tail end but a lot of bands were still blowing up in 1990 uh Warren's Cherry Pie came out that year uh Poison Flesh and Blood uh didn't tri didn't Firehouse's debut album come out in 1990 I think so I, I I blame the record label because I still have tons of old music magazines you do not see any ads for this album and very little publicity. So the record label, fuck this band, but go out and listen to that debut album uh, by Electric Angels. It's phenomenal. The, the follow-up, which is some, I know I can't remember the title of it. I'll put it in the video, uh, was released years later. It, it hasn't really grabbed me, but the debut will grab you Go find it, Electric Angels. Now, the next band that I'm going to talk about is Lillian Axe. And, and I've done a full, complete video breaking down the first four Lillian Axe albums. But this is a, another band that, that just... It, record, sometimes, and I've said this so many times, some, some record labels don't know shit. They didn't know how to promote Lillian Axe. Um, those first four albums, Lillian Axe, Love and War, Poetic Justice, and Psycho Schizophrenia deserved so much more, but I'm just going to briefly touch on my favorite by the band, and that's the 1989 album, Love and War. Steve Blaze, their, 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 their songwriter, their creative force, and man, the guy never got credit uh, for the lyrics that he came up with, and he did some of the simpler, he did some of the, you know, the the, the sex stuff or whatever, but man, he, he also dived so much deeper into the human condition, especially on poetic justice and psycho schizophrenia, but love and war is, is ever so many songs on this album could have blown up. Uh, Ron Taylor, the, the singer of the band, man, one of the most original voices, one of the best voices 
um, of this genre. Love and War d deserved to go five times platinum, and, and it's the record label's fault that they didn't. So songs you need to check out from Love and War. All's Fair in Love and War. Man, what an epic album opening. She Likes It on Top. It's not a sex song. Uh, it's a little bit deeper than that. Diana, not a ballad, but but kind of a mid-tempo song. Um, Down on You, The World Stopped Turning, My Number, shit, are there any songs that I don't need to, to tell you? Um, my Number, Show a Little Love, that was a single. Um, Letters in the Rain and Ghost of Winter, and I think the only song I skipped is probably Fool's Paradise, and pro probably Fool's Paradise needed to be in there as well. So as far as ballads go, and I think I probably said it in the rock songs, but I get so excited talking about this fucking band, I get moving a little too fast. So The World Stop Turning probably qualifies as a ballad. Man, the lyrics on that song will just hit you right here. And then Ghost of Winter, another great ballad. It's not on par with The World Stop Turning. So, um, man, go out and find Love and War. Go listen to the debut album, Lillian Axe, which was produced by Robin Crosby of Rat, Poetic Justice, um, and Psycho Schizophrenia. Man, the, the, and this band is still releasing great music. They're still touring. Um, Ron Taylor is no longer in the band, but Steve Blaze is, is still writing the songs. And, and, uh, and, and you know what? Like, you don't always say this, but he seems just like a good guy. Steve Blaze seems like a good guy that you want to support. So support Lillian Axe however you can. Next up is the album Screwed, Blued, and Tattooed from Sleaze Bees. And, and, and I, hope, I hope the passion that I have for these bands comes through because, man, like honestly, it breaks my heart that some of these bands that I love so much, I feel like, you know, I feel like these bands that, that write songs that hit me, like, you know, they did something for me. And I wish that it was paid back to them. You know, with, with whatever fame and, and whatever fortune it was that they were looking for. So, you know, and Sleazebees is one of those bands, man, that they did put an album called called Look Like Hell, I think in 1987. And then, um, fuck, where am I? Screwed, Blued, and Tattooed. Um, did, it got to 115 on Billboard. It came out in 1990. They did put out an another great album called Power Tool in 92. And then an album that a lot of people love, but I, I just, I don't really get it, Insanity Beach in 1994. But Screw Blued and Tattooed, I feel, man, it, it got, I think it got three videos made, but you don't see a lot of promotion for it in the magazines. So they deserve so much more. So let's talk about the songs that you need to know from this band. Okay, songs that would rate an eight or higher for rock songs. Rock in the Western World. Oh man, what an album opener. House is on Fire. Screwed, Blued, and Tattooed, the title track. Damned If We Do, Damned If We Don't. Heroes Die Young, which is, is maybe, it's not really a ballad, it's more of a mid-tempo, but man, awesome lyrics in that one. Um, when the Brains Go to the Balls, and yes, that song is everything that you think it's going to be. Uh, and yeah. And then there's a couple ballads. This time, I'll, I'll be honest, it's it's not the best ballad of the genre. It's not bad. I don't mind listening to it. But there is a, a, a really cool ballad called Stranger Than Paradise, which, which got a video. And I, thought, I think Stranger is... Stranger in Paradise and Heroes Die Young, at least both of those got videos. Um, so Stranger Than Paradise, very cool ballad, very cool band. Check out this album and Power Tool. Uh, they deserve so much more. There was a, a great ballad on Power Tool called I Don't Want to Live Without You. And, and you know, the title of it sounds like kind of cliche, but man, it's so original. It's got this epic guitar breakdown at the end. So check that out. Check out Screwed, Blued, and Tattooed. Um, Sleaze Bees, man, I can't say enough about those guys. Okay, the next album we're gonna talk about is Get Used To It by Rhino Bucket. And th this album, 
it so I'm a huge ACDC fan, right? And and I I think that Back in Black I could very easily say that Back in Black just might be my my favorite album of all time. Well, Get Used to It by Rhino Bucket is the album that ACDC should have put out after Back in Black. It is that good. And I'm sh I'm sure in fact you know, I wouldn't doubt if, if bands see this stuff. So, so George DeLevo, uh, lead singer, songwriter, guitar player in Rhino Bucket, I, I'm, I'm sure that he is, is tired of the ACDC comparison. But man, some bands try to copy ACDC and they do it in a way that sucks and, and I don't want to say disrespectful, but they don't do it well. Rhino Bucket, they, they, they sound like... ACDC is a huge influence and you can immediately connect it, but damn it, they're their own band and they are amazing. And you know, this is, this is a bet here. You're not going to find ballads on this album. They have put out, they had a self-titled debut that came out in uh, 1990. Get Used to It came out in 1992. And it's known for, they had an epic song called Ride With Yourself on the Wayne's World 2 soundtrack. I wish that that, that had helped this, this band and this album blow up for whatever reason it didn't. But that's probably their claim to fame. They put out another great album in 1994 called Pain. And they have steadily been releasing albums since then. I, I know a couple years ago, George said he was going to shut the band down. Now it looks like they are back playing shows again, but get used to it. Man, this album should have blown up. And, you know, 1992 or not, it, they, they weren't a hair band. Rhino Bucket is not hair metal. They are a straight up ACDC influenced rock band. So songs that you need to know from Get Used To It. And I, I wonder if I'm gonna have to name all of them, but Beat To Death Like A Dog. Oh my God, one of the best album, album openers. No Friend Of Mine, Hey There. The Devil Sent You, This Ain't Heaven, She's a Screamer, Ride With Yourself. Okay, so maybe there's a couple that, I, that I'll, I'll leave off, but those songs are all in eight or above. Most are, are at that 10 level. Go out and, and buy, get used to it. Go out and support Rhino Bucket. They're a band that's still doing it, and, and we need to support these bands. And the last album we're going to talk about is... Wild Side and their album Under the Influence, which again came out in 1992. Man, that year is just the bane of my existence. So many great bands, um, you know, and even like you know, your big bands like Warren's Doggy Dog album came out that year and got screwed over. But Under the Influence, um, Wild Side is probably best known for their guitar player, Brent Woods, who still plays in Sebastian Bach's band. And I think he played with Vince Neil for a while. So really an in-demand guitar player. But their vocalist, now I'm going to fuck up his name. I think it's, what the fuck is their singer's name? Uh, their vocalist, Drew Hanna. Man, this guy, like, like vocal, he's, he's the closest thing you're going to get to Axl Rose era, the Appetite for Destruction era. He has that, that high but gritty vocals and not many people are, are capable of doing both and he does this in spades on this album um so he he just kills the rock songs but then they, they have a couple ballads that are just phenomenal uh there there was uh, a song called uh uh hang on lucy that there was a video for it is a great song right song wrong time and then i think uh, Drew, the singer, has has independently put out a, a video for one of the, their ballads called a "Just a, Called Just Another Night," and that's been in the last several years. So you can find those two videos on on YouTube. So let's talk about the songs that you need to know for from Under the Influence. Okay, rock songs: "Hang On, Lucy," "So Far Away," "Monkey See, Monkey Do," "Lad in Sin." Hair of the Dog, which is not a Nazareth cover. It's their, their original song. And Clock Strikes. And then the two ballads, Just Another Night 
and Kiss This Love Goodbye. Um, phenomenal ballads. If you know, in 1989, those ballads go to the top of the charts. In 1992, they sink without a trace, which is what happened to this album. But uh, Wild Side Do Not Despair because universally, at least, you know, at least on Twitter, with, with real fans of this hair metal or hard rock genre, whatever you want to call it, glam metal, um, Under the Influence is, is one of those albums that everybody talks about, universally loved. It just didn't make it into the mainstream. So, you know, just like all these other bands that I listed, hey, um, go out. I just gave you 10 albums, and I could probably do this video four or five more times. There are so many cool bands um, that, that, that deserved better, but for whatever reason, you know, like I said, they, they could have, they should have, they didn't. So here are 10. Um, go out and find them. You know, if you can't buy them, I, I know a lot of these, a lot of these albums are, some of them are being re-released, um, but you can find them on YouTube. You know, they might be kind of spendy on, on eBay, but, but however you can support these bands, you know, if they're still playing, go out and see their shows, but buy their albums, you know, uh, cause they, they deserve more than what they got. They did a lot for me by putting out, you know, some songs that, that to this day, um, are still really important to me. So that's it for episode 10 from the hair metal guru. I am Anthony. They call me the guru. Go see me, uh, I, uh on Twitter at hair metal guru and, and, you know, share this video. Hey, tell me where I got it wrong. T tell me what, tell me what bands I'm missing. Tell me what bands should have been included in this. And, you know, so give me a comment. Get, if you like this kind of stuff, give me a like, um, support the channel, uh, you know, subscribe. And, and if not, hey, no worries. I appreciate um, any time that, that you give something that I put up. So we'll see you next week with episode number 11. Until then, take care.